Hey there, Nick Lee here, coming at you with another video all about DAX and Power BI. So our goal here is we wanna be able to group different items together in our visuals in Power BI by utilizing our DAX measures to accomplish this. We're gonna be using measures such as all, all selected, all except, and even one called remove filter. So let's jump right into it and see what we can do. Before we begin, want to learn more about Power BI? Visit prag.works slash nick40 and you'll get a 40% discount on an annual on-demand learning subscription and you'll get access to over 100 courses. Now onto the video. So I got a Power BI report here and it has a bunch of AdventureWorks data in it. Now this AdventureWorks data is awesome, our tried and true uh, standard data that anyone can access and anyone can utilize here. But as you can see on the screen, we have different sales territory groups, countries, and regions. So we're just looking at our total sales across everything here uh, by the sales amount column. So first things first, if let's say we want to see, all right, well, what are all of our sales across these different items? So Essentially, what we're trying to do is what are all of our sales for Europe? What are all of our sales for North America? What are all of our sales for Pacific? And not actually even start grouping even further with country and region as well. The reason why you wouldn't do something like this is maybe to gather percent of totals. You need uh, some denominator to divide against or just any type of comparison or whatever your total for your country is uh, sans the grand total you know there's a few different ways to look at this so in our case we're going to start pretty basic here and just look at the total sales so let's say i want to display a number on screen that is just looking at the total sales over everything so every country every group every region so i'd start that off by making a new measure and right, so i'm going to right click on our table create a new measure here and I'm gonna call this Total Sales Global. Global's a good name because I wanna say this is encompasses all the sales for absolutely everything. We could probably guess the number we're looking for here to return on every line item in this visual. That number at the bottom, 29,358,677. Essentially, I want this number to replicate across every line item in this visual. So what I'm going to do is if I just did a simple sum of the sales amount column, it is going to just give us the same value of whatever the sum of sales amount is. Uh, it's pretty straightforward here. We haven't changed any of the filter context whatsoever. So I'm gonna fix up the formatting on this column. So as you can see, it's the same. So now we need to start grouping this. And the first group that we're going to do is group up, well, everything. So. I am going to start this off. I want to modify filter context. Therefore, I'm going to use the calculate function. Fix up my formatting a little here. And I am going to use the all function. So as you can see, the all function says returns all the rows in the table, values in the column, ignoring any filters that may have been applied. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that whole sales territory table in here. So notice that the all function allowed us to do either a whole table or individual columns. In this case, I'm gonna put the whole table, basically saying any filter that comes from the sales territory table whatsoever, let's get rid of it. I don't care about it. I don't wanna see it anymore. So I'm gonna hit enter. And as you can see, we get that 29,358,677 replicating all the way down. All right, that's our first group. It's at the global group. It's at the highest level. All right, so I'm gonna create a new measure here. Right click your table, new measure. And this time I want to create a new measure that is going to group it up by country. So essentially what's happening here is I want to remove any of the filters that are in the filter context by region because region is the lowest level of our kind of hierarchical type of data here and country is the next one up. So I want to see the total sales by country. Now you'll notice here that everything's unique except for the North America regions and that's totally okay. So essentially we're gonna see the total sales for each one of these line items until we get to United States, and then it's gonna group all of the United States together. So we're gonna create a new measure called total sales by country. All right, and for this one, we're going to do the calculate function because we're modifying the filter context. We're gonna sum the sales amount, and we are going to use the all function once again to remove a filter for a specific column this time. So this time I wanna remove the filter context for the, uh, oops, wrong column there, 
the sales territory region. So once I remove it from the sales territory region, I'm gonna add this measure to our table, fix the formatting. And you can see that now our total sales is getting looked at here by country. So France has its own line item, Germany has its own line item, UK, Canada, et cetera, until we get to the United States. That United States value is repeating because it is that sum of total, that sum of sales amount all grouped together by country. So what about if I wanna look at everything grouped by group? Now, in that case, I would need to remove two columns worth of filters. I would need to remove the two columns such as sales territory region and sales territory country rather. So because of that, I could do exactly what we just did and include two columns instead of the one column. So let's look at an example. So let's create a new measure here. And I am going to call this total sales by group. So this time I'm going to do calculate sum of sales amount. And I could do an all function of one column, which is the region column, and another column, which is the country column. Hit enter. And let's add this to our table, so it's territory by group. So as you can see, those values are repeating by group itself. It does group it up exactly as we intended here. But there is a little bit of a problem using this method. And the problem using this method where we're referencing multiple columns, well, what if we end up adding more columns to this visual that has a little bit more descriptive, we get even more granular, we get more kind of lower level and type of this uh, geographical hierarchy. We'd have to go back into the measure, modify it and redo it again. So what we could do in a case like this is we could use a different function that would account for it. So I'm gonna modify our total sales by group measure and instead of doing the all function over multiple columns, I'm gonna use the all except function. Now what this one's gonna allow, allow me to do is choose one column and say, don't remove filters from this one column, but remove filter from any other column that may ever be associated with this visual. So I'm gonna use the all except function here. And one different thing about all except from all is you have to put the table name first and then the table and column name afterwards. So in this case, I'm going to do an all except over the fact internet sales table. And the column I want to exclude from being ignored is the sales territory group column. So if I hit enter, as you can see, these values in this total sales by group column did not change whatsoever because now it's going to essentially future proof our visual here to no matter how many columns we add or remove, it's always going to be total sales by group. So let's jump into another scenario here. I want to look at all of my sales over all groups. Now this is all fine and dandy until we start adding filtering. Now let me show you what I mean. So let's add a uh, another measure here that we're going to add to our bottom table that we have on screen. And this one we're going to call total sales global. I'm going to call it number two because it's essentially doing something very similar as before. Um, so we're actually going to write it the same as total sales by group here. And it's going to be sum of sales amount over all of these sales Fact Internet Sales Table. And once again, this works all fine and dandy here. But the problem is, is if I want to use my, my slicer at the top and say, hey, I want to remove all filters by country and just look at this total value. Well, what, what happens if you check, select a slicer? I want to look at all sales over all groups only for the selected ones on this slicer here. So if I select, for instance, both Europe and North America as values, we expect the grand total, as you could see in this table down here, to be 20 million and 297,000. Instead, it's showing that full 29 million and some change, even though I have the slicer selected. Well, let's say I want that total sales global two that I have here to only look at the selected countries coming from this slicer. Well, let's go ahead and modify our calculation to account for that. So instead of using the all function here, 
and get rid of that. We're gonna use the all selected function. And in this case, we just need to put it, we could do it over the whole table here if we wanted to, uh, but this time we're gonna do it over the sales territory group. And now you can see that this all selected function does work. I'm gonna fix my formatted formatting here. And you can see now we do get that 20 million over everything that's replicated across every line item. So I now I could choose multiple fields from my slicer and it still respects the slicer selection, even though we told it to not respect any filters coming from our group column. So there's one more thing I wanna add here, guys, uh, that is pretty neat is that there is this remove filter function. A lot of times people see that and want to utilize it. Well, what's the difference between remove filter and all? Well, it's pretty simple. The difference between remove filter and all is they're basically the same thing. Uh, all has a little bit more functionality because the all function behaves a little bit differently when it's utilized across a whole table and you're returning a whole table. So the all function returns an entire table if you wanted to, or you can use the all function to filter down items in the calculate function. The remove filter function only removes filters from something like a calculate function. The remove filter function does not generate an entire table. All right, so up here, uh, we did a bunch of calculations. Let me remove some of these fields so I can show you the difference. So I want to keep maybe just sales territory by country because the sales territory by country column is the one where we just looked at sales territory region to be ignored that therefore it looks at the country. So we could do this essentially the same exact thing here that would work instead of the all function. If we rewrote this utilizing the remove filter function over that same exact column, that sales territory region and I hit enter, you're gonna notice the values aren't gonna change at all. So the remove filters function is exactly the same as the all function when it's utilized in the calculate function, just the all function has a little bit more uh, usability when you want it to return a table, but that's a whole nother topic. That's the video on grouping up items uh, in a visual, utilizing all these different all functions. Uh, it's a great way to group your data up together with very few lines of DAX to write. Uh, even though it's very few lines of DAX, you are starting to dip your toes a little bit into the intermediate and advanced level DAX writing. Uh, you'd be surprised how few lines can be quite a complex topic. In a scenario like this, I think it worked out really great for this example, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.